Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am starting a new series today called Tuesday Tips. And in today's tip video, we are going to be talking about using Gather Round for your younger kids. So if you are interested in hearing those, be sure to stick around. All right, friends, my followers over on Instagram all decided that Tuesday tips should be a thing. So here we are. This will be a new series. I don't know how long it'll last, but one Tuesday a month, I will post a Tuesday tips video. This will be a video on any kind of thing that you may need tips for. So anytime you see a Tuesday's tips, or if you see another video and you think of something that maybe you need tips on, uh, always leave those in the comments for me. Let me know, hey, I, I would like to have a Tuesday tips video on this. Uh, or if you come up with some ideas, anything like that, feel free to leave them. I will kind of keep a running list and I will do my best to uh, make sure that I touch on those topics if I feel like I have enough tips for whatever you guys may come up with. So. Today, I am going to talk about gather round for younger kids. For those of you who may be new here, uh, I am a homeschool mom of only one girl uh, and she is five. We do currently use gather round as uh, our full curriculum with of course, of course, math on the side. Um, but yes, we do use gather round as I guess you would say it's intended. She is currently in the early reader uh, level of the student notebooks. And we have been doing gather round for about a year now. We did do the ready to read series. We had done one unit um, prior to ready to read. Uh, then we went through the ready to read program. And then now we have done two or three units since then. So a little over a year we have been using gather round and so i just wanted to give you guys a few of the ways that i uh, use gather round and kind of some tips that i have sort of figured out as we have gone through these different units um, these are just things that i use uh, to make sure that we are getting through each of the lessons uh, if you have used Gather Round for any length of time, you know that sometimes the teacher's guide can be a little heavy and it can be a little bit of reading, especially when you have, um, you know, want kids as young as mine being five, uh, sometimes even a little younger and sometimes even a little older. They're kind of listening in and participating. So these are just things that I have kind of used to help us get through those readings uh, and making sure that, that we're actually getting through with the lessons. All right, so tip number one is to break up the lessons if you need to. And that could look several different ways. Uh, my biggest suggestion is each unit really kind of, it, it's different. They're laid out similarly, but the flow is a little bit different. The pages are a little bit different. So really take a little little bit of time before you start the unit and go through there. Look at, at the information that's presented in the teacher's guide, kind of match it up with the pages that are in the student notebook and see where you can find some connections. A good example of this is the Creepy Crawlies unit that we did. I will link that um, video up for you, but what I did for that unit specifically uh, was I would go through the teacher's guide and where I could match up certain insects with uh, the student notebook pages, there would be different diagrams and things like that. I would kind of match those up and I would make a little sticky note in my teacher's guide to let me know after these two insects, take a small little break, go over to your student notebook and fill out those, those couple of um, sections that are, you know, that correlate with that insect. And that kind of gave us a, a chance to break up some, some of that reading and it kind of held my daughter's attention. Now that worked well for creepy crawlies, but that didn't necessarily work as well for the artist's unit. So again, just kind of go through the units check it out, see, see what you're working with, see if you can kind of make those connections. 
If that uh, isn't necessarily something that is going to work, then maybe just plan on taking an actual break. Decide where in the teacher's guide you can stop, what two pages, two or three pages in the student notebook you will have covered in the teacher's guide and just say, okay, this is where, this is what we're going to do on Monday. And then the second half is what we will do on Tuesday. Maybe even if you have older children, maybe you take care of the first half uh, and then you break for lunch and then your your older kids take care of the, you know, the second half of the lesson. And that kind of leads me into my tip number two, which is to plan a break or plan a snack time. This is something in that we do. Uh, I actually have scheduled snack times because I was finding that snack time was all the time, but lunchtime and dinner time we were never hungry. I know you guys know what I'm saying. So <laughs> we have scheduled snack times um, and I plan for that during our school day. So at 9.15 is when we get our first snack and that is just what it is. We both know that at 9.15 we get a snack. Now, if it's a snack we can bring into the classroom and she can eat while I finish reading, we'll do that. Uh, if it's not, or if she doesn't want to do that, then she will eat her snack. I will, you know, take a few minutes to do something else. And then we will come back into the classroom and we will finish up our lesson. But just having that planned break and us both knowing when to expect it, it's the same time every day, that certainly helps. Number three is uh, something that I actually just recently started, but I have found actually works pretty well. And that is giving keywords or uh, even sometimes they already have vocabulary words in the units for you. And so I will use the vocabulary words, but just giving words for her to listen out for. So she can be doing whatever it is in here that she is doing while I'm reading, but she has got to listen out for the keywords when she hears whatever words I have given to her to listen to, listen for, for that day, she's got to raise her hand. Uh, and I will pause. If I read the sentence and the keyword is in there and she didn't raise her hand, I will pause and that gets her attention. And then I will read the sentence again and then she raises her hand. Uh, but that's just an easy way, one, to work on vocabulary words because I will choose words. I try and, and kind of skim over and see if there were any words that are repeated a little more often. Um, but that also will help expand her vocabulary because she's she's listening for specific words um, that aren't generally in conversation or if they are, uh, they're not uh, words that we've practiced spelling or, or anything like that. I try and you try and find words that she really has to uh, listen out for. Moving on to number four is allowing them to use and play with quiet toys. This is something we have done from the beginning and they, my daughter needs something to do with her hands. She is fine sitting still and quiet for, you know, a, a 10 minute picture book, but to sit and listen to the teacher's guide, uh, even though some of them are really cool and really fun and really engaging, at some point she's going to get lost along the way and there's gonna be no bringing her back. But if I give her something to do with her hands, she's busy with that and then I throw the keywords in so she's really gotta think about what, you know, really has to, to listen out and think about what she is hearing. Those things are really, really helping us. And quiet toys could be anything. And I let her pick. She can have whatever she wants to as long as it's quiet. Sometimes it's Play-Doh, sometimes it's kinetic sand, sometimes it's Barbies, sometimes it's dinosaurs. It doesn't matter to me as long as it's quiet and as long as she is listening. And my fifth and final tip is probably the most important, and that is don't push too much. You know your child, you know their limits. You know when they're getting to that point when they're just disengaged and things are just not connecting. If it's not working, just stop what you're doing and try something else. Put it down for the rest of the day. Change your curriculum. 
you have full reign and full freedom, as you know, to do what is best for your child. And it is important to pay attention to those cues that they are giving us. Sometimes it's just an off day and sometimes that just means I'm not, we're not even going to do this today. Let's just take the day off and we will try again tomorrow. Maybe we need to work on, you know, some, some character issues today or something like that. Those are totally fine. But I think we sometimes can get so stuck in one spot or we can get hyper focused on we've got to get this done i want to get this done and move on to the next thing or sometimes we even get excited and i have certainly found myself in this situation where it's we're just we're excited for for what we have planned or or what's coming next after this and so i just want to hurry up and finish i could do this in five minutes if you would just hurry up and do it and then we would be done and then we can move on and sometimes we 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 kind of put that on our children and they kind of feel the weight of that stress. Um, and that is certainly not going to help them stay focused and, and get done what they need to so get I think done. the main takeaway here is while yes, they do need a little bit of a push and a little bit of encouragement for some of those times where they just don't feel like doing something that you know they can, there are times where they just they're just done for the day. Um, and it's okay to give that to them. Uh, and if something is consistently just not working and you just cannot find a rhythm and a flow, drop it and do something else. And there could be a chance that you would come back to that and maybe wait until the next month or six months or another year or, you know, once they get to this particular grade, maybe this would be good for them. And I am finding that even with Gather Round, we love, love, love Gather Round and we love the unit study approach. But I know even just looking through the app and looking on the Facebook group pages and things like that, I know there are some units there would there's no way that we would be able to do it. i'm I'm seeing parents um, like, for example, human body. Human body is a big unit and it's very detailed and it's very in depth. And that is fantastic. And I am excited to get to human body eventually. But realistically, that's not going to happen for us, especially at this age. Maybe in a couple of years from now, we will be ready for that. But right now, I am trying to stick with things that she is interested in, things that she wants to learn about, and the units that she chose. So bonus tip is maybe allow your children or your child to choose a unit or a couple of units. For us personally, I give her a list of the units that she can choose from and she picks all of them. She picks whichever ones she wants to do and she picks what comes after what. So we started with one unit, we're getting kind of close to the end of that and I say, hey, all right, out of the list that you picked, which one do you wanna do next? That helps a lot. So that is my bonus tip. Maybe give your child the opportunity to pick what they want to learn. Maybe that will help kind of hold their interest as well. So those are my Tuesday tips for today. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you soon.